with of course a1 challenge as they prepare for game two in the national basketball league playoffs so john vian and simbe will be joining us a bit later on the show ian good evening welcome aboard good evening andrew good to be here as always it is the champions league night yep. i'm listening to that song Man. in my head right now it is a beautiful time actually yep. the european football season really gets going when this competition starts but like you said a lot of drama even on the local scene yep. a few coaches saying goodbye to their respective clubs or national teams. There's so much going on. So much going yeah. on as always. Can't All wait. right, let's start here. Let's start at URA because the Star Times Uganda Premier League Club URA, we do understand, have parted ways with two members of its coaching team as it clears way for the arrival of David Obua as their new head coach. Now, uh, a local website, Pulse Sport, does report uh, that Fred Mhomza, who has been serving as the interim head coach, has been relieved of his duties at the club. Uh, the shakeup, of course, of the coaching team has also seen uh, the strength and conditioning boss Okuba Byron asked to step down from the role at uh, That man on your screen, uh, who was, of course served as the assistant to Sam Timbe, uh, will see his role now taken up uh, by a new assistant who will be named, we do understand, in the incoming days. However, uh, the club are expected to retain most of its existing coaching staff, uh, uh, making sure there's a smooth transi transition uh, between the old coaching setup what now seems to have that man on your screen yeah uh this is very interesting we kind of spoke about this a bit yesterday more news coming in and uh i think yesterday one of the things that we were wondering was what will they do to this particular setup how will they change things will they let mohomaza continue as the number two will he want to be mm -hmm. the number two anyway uh but yeah it looks like looks like david obua is going to be the head coach and unfortunately for Mohamuza, who did a very, a very good job, I think, when you look at the way their season turned around yeah. in the second round last year. First round, they were way below the standard you expect at URA. Second round, when Mohamuza joined, there was a bit of an improvement in performance. They went all the way up to, I think, a top five finish eventually. Spoils the party by beating Villa on the last day of the season. So yeah, they did a really good job, especially when he joined at the Super 8. I think there yeah. were also good signs of what they were building in terms of how they had set up, how they were competing, certainly against KCC. In the quarters, by the way, they beat Bright Stars. Very, very tough yeah, team there. Yeah, as expected. But, uh, <laughs> but, Come on. but yeah, they did beat KCC at Lugogo, which is always a tough, tough thing to do. Go to the final. Penalty is a bit of a lottery, so... Yeah, it looked like he was he was doing a good job, yeah. but ultimately they're moving in a different direction. It's going to be a baptism of fire, though. Yeah. First of all, uh, we're going to look at his coaching profile, David Oboa, quite shortly. Uh, but more importantly, he comes to a really good team, a team that is expected to compete for the championship next season. So they, there is no time to learn. There's no time to relax, even though we know this is one of his major first jobs as a coach. Uh, he comes in with a bit of experience, obviously, knowing the Uganda Premier League, having played in it and watched it over the years. Uh, here is a quick look at his statistics. He's just a 39-year-old, this guy. Um, well, he's got a UEFA A diploma, uh, and obviously he is a bit an assistant at Maroons for a short spell yep. and also head coach for the Lango province. So there's nothing in terms of experience he really brings to this job. Yeah, he doesn't bring that. What he brings is experience as a former footballer, right. as an international, as someone who has travelled all around the world actually not just on the african continent mm. he has been to well north america he has been to europe he is a guy who knows the game perhaps i was going to say inside out yeah it's in his family as well uefa a coach which is quite impressive mm. that is uh, that is that is something that many of us would like to get eventually <laughs> but yeah certainly in terms of experience and clubs yeah. you can't say he has much experience there but he does have a lot of football experience but his football experience means he will be a respected match then as well yeah no doubt about it and the funny thing about david i say funny thing it's not even funny at all yeah. <laughs> but when i was coaching in the big league way back when right yes i did coach in the big league i did invite him for a training session yeah and the respect that was given to him from the time he stepped on that training ground all the way through. Yeah. This is David Oboe you're talking about. He walks there, he commands the respect. Players are listening to him, players are asking him questions. They know he has walked the walk. He's not just a guy who is coming around to yeah. pay a visit. I, t I like to do that thing, especially when I started out. But he was that guy and you could see the session he ran very good session attention to detail he knew what he wanted from those players and this was a while ago so he has since 
added to yeah. his credentials and I'm pretty sure that he can't wait to get started and he will probably do, do a well. good job. All right, let you go. Uh, again, we're talking about David Oboa in case you're just joining in and missing some of those key details this evening on NBA Sport this evening. You are a football club uh, set to announce the arrival uh, of the Uganda Cranes legend David Oboa as their new head coach. Uh, just a few weeks after completing his UEFA A diploma in Belfast, that is uh, Northern Ireland. Of course, Oboa, according to the information we have again, has signed a one-year employment contract with the tax collectors, and this will be his first managerial job, obviously, in the UPL. Uh, he was present at the Bombo Grounds as URA drew nil-nil with UPDF, uh, that is in their league opener. He will be on the touchline, we do understand. Now, this is fresh information, we do understand. He will be on the touchline this Friday, the 22nd of September, as the tax collectors will be hosting Gaddafi, according to plans that we are hearing. You see, it's a rumor <laughs> game, guys. It's a rumor game. Uh, but the head coach position, obviously, uh, at URA got vacant after the demise of Sam Timbe in August and uh, the assistant, uh, that is Fred Mhumza, was in charge at the time. So he could be opening up against Gaddafi as we look at what URA's next five matches do look like at the moment, Ian. Yeah, so they have Gaddafi on the 22nd, that's Friday, like you said. Then, oh, interesting fixture on the 29th, Andrew Kabura. Yeah. Very, very tough game against, yes, that's right, yeah. the mighty salty the bright stars. <laughs> so that one should be fun. And then, obviously, in October, the fixtures aren't as many. They will have a home game against Wakiso Giants. And then... They will be playing away to Maroons, which mm -hmm. looks like it will be a very interesting fixture. Maroons started with a 3 0 victory. These Maroons, are hard games, man. Maroons have an interesting start because yeah. they, they have uh, SC Villa, they have URA somewhere, and I think in between they have KCC, if I'm not mistaken. So Maroons have a really tough mm -hmm. starting fixture lineup, but it's tough for all the opponents as well because yeah. of how Maroons played. So David will be going in there. It is in the deep end. There's no time, like you said. No honeymoon period, no chance. nothing This like is really that. going to be tough. Listen, that's one of the polls we are running this evening as well on the show. So do join in and give us your side of the story. Uh, and let's quickly jump into those big, big trending polls. We do this every single day, partly because interacting with you is very important to us. So let's look at the polls this evening. Exactly our discussion point. What do you make of your as soon to be appointment of David Oboa? I like the phrasing. Yeah. Soon to be appointment. It's a room again. <laughs> and then who do you love? Who would you love really to see as the next coach of the Crested Cranes? Because now Abdallah Mobiru, uh, well, after an official statement from the Federation. They had to retract that and say he will not be the head coach of the Crested Cranes. So there's a bit of trouble and drama in there as well. Uh, but let's quickly uh, go through uh, that lineup, guys, as we continue with the big David Oboa story from URA. Let's look at the lineup that was used in their game against UPDF. And then Ian Mutenda can quickly rush us through the kind of quality he finds at the club. I mean, we are talking about these guys being title contenders. That's yeah. what it looks like. No, I, I think they definitely are the squad. They have one thing that you would look at and think, okay, maybe they signed so many players, so mm. it will be a bit too soon for them to gel and get going. But this is Uganda. This is Uganda Premier League. Most of these players have been to the, have played at this top flight before. So it shouldn't take them as long to settle. But sometimes it does take a while for for different players to gel. Interesting, interesting choices. Senjobe has been, uh, is now definitely the first choice mm -hmm. left back. And the hero, I think, has moved on to Rwanda. Said Chene, interesting choice there. There were rumors of him having a bit of a fallout with, uh, with Mohomoza before that. So he does bring experience. They have signed some young players, but Said Chene has been there. He knows the game. He has been there for a while. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing that Obua will be looking at Obua. Soon to be appointed yeah. Oboa, possibly, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be looking at that as one of his goals, you guys. Joshua Lubwama offers something a bit different because he is this taller guy, taller presence, more physical presence in the midfield, as opposed to the likes of Cheyenne and Tibita, who get on the ball and want to play. They're a bit more technical. Mm -hmm. Aliro, very good signing. He has been playing left and right throughout preseason. He does play, I think, for the same uh, drum team that Oboe yeah. has been coaching. 
Ivan Ahimbisiwe, different type of player. He is that centre forward, scored goals with UPDF. Interesting to see if they go with Ivan alone or if they add Sharif Chimbo as well as Ivan to go with two strikers mm -hmm. and try to find that balance. So they have so many options. Hassan Kalega, another player who likes to get on the ball and play. He was in police. He has been playing Police FC, yeah. not Police Police, but Police FC. He has been playing uh, in many of the Super 8 games alongside either Hood Mulichi, yeah. uh, Joshua Lubwama, and, and sometimes they throw in one more defensive type of option. So I'm guessing Obu, because of the type of view he has of the game, mm -hmm. wants to be more expansive. He might look to make a few changes and uh, especially with that midfield. If you have Tibita and Nwamanya, two attacking midfielders yeah. who want to get on the ball, he might want to go for those two at the same time from the start of the game. So many options. He has defensive type options in there, physical, experienced guys. Mm -hmm. He has the younger, more technical guys. So many players to choose to choose from, but between Hood Mulichi, Enoch, Walu Simbi and Feseli, Whichever two of those he plays in the center of defense, Should be fine. they can start the play and that's what you think this team will be doing going All right. forward. There you go, send us your side of the story. We want to know what you think of uh, David Oboa's soon-to-be appointment as the head coach of URA and then we can look at some of your reactions. Uh, as a matter of fact, before I go back to Twitter, we've got some reactions already coming in from you guys. Uh, the question was, what do you make of URA's official soon-to-be appointment of David Oboa, a legend <laughs> of the game here in the country? Uh, if this uh, does happen, as we expect here on Sport this evening, I uh, think it will be a whole new chapter for that generation of footballers as well. Uh, let's look at your reactions then. Um, one is from Coach Carl who says it's a reward to Uganda's football fraternity. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Danny Nyeko says, uh, Obua David will make a fantastic uh, appointment um, as URA official head coach. Uh, he echoes modern day coaching as he worked under the tutelage. Is that how it's spelled? Correct. Okay. Pronounced. Of, uh, yes, it is spelled. <laughs> I apologize, Come Mr. On. Host. Ah, of many experienced coaches and just completed his UEFA A advanced diploma in Belfast. Yeah. Um, so it's a huge story as well. Uh, Kamara Kenneth says, I pray they work with Fred Mumza to get good results. You know, God doesn't answer all prayers. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so I'm telling you, you can't get everything right. You can't get everything right. Uh, Raymond Musinguzi, Asante for joining us as always. He says, I think it's good to give him this opportunity uh, to see what he can offer as a coach at this stage. He also has a bit of experience working with young local players at Maroons, Police yeah. and KCCA. No, that is very true. He has been involved in the game. The drum thing, definitely, but that experience with those clubs, uh, the Spelly at, at Maroons, mm. he has been trying to learn or trying to work around different players. George Simbe was the head coach at Maroons when he was the assistant. Yeah. He even got a bit of that experience, apart from all the other guys that that he has worked with. Okay, uh, more reactions. One is from No But UG. He says uh, his understanding of the game speaks for itself. Good choice by URA and may he flourish so long as KCC wins the league title. I have no problem with King David. All right. <laughs> Obur uh, Emma says one of the best moves by URA. Uh, David Obua has a lot of work, uh, a lot of football knowledge, uh, and given time to do his own stuff, URA will be unplayable. Interesting. Listen, my, mm. my, my fear in this. Yeah. Is that no one is questioning his experience. That's true. That's true. Everyone seems to be focusing on the fact that he is a legend. And I understand yeah. that. There's excitement because of who it is. It was interesting that Obur was endorsing Obua. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know, There's man. A connection There's, in there? there must be a connection. Fair but enough. now, this is the comment that you're talking about. Time be will tell. Time will tell exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying because everyone's excited about who he is. Yeah. But Ahmed Bint Kalyango is saying time will tell, but he has to understand that these boys are not like them in that they take long to understand the tactics. He's True. a bit more skeptical mm -hmm. or he's keeping his feet on the ground. He I'm wants to you. understand what he's doing, see how he learns the job before yeah. he passes judgment. John Vianney Simbe is joining us this evening in studio. Good evening to you, John Vianney, and uh, we're excited that uh, you get to join us on sport this evening. Well, uh, I don't know what's uh, going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who sets up a sports this evening show yeah. when Milan is playing? Yeah. Doesn't make <laughs> sense, does it? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And then I really almost didn't come onto this show right. because somebody took it upon themselves over the weekend Yes. To mock me about Milan's defeat. I don't know what he's talking thing. about, just to let you know. 
I, I, I have no idea what he's talking about. Most people, sort yourselves I out what we can move people for. Yes. when they lose. But somebody took it upon themselves to send me a message that focus on Inter Milan. Now, who does that? I don't know. Whoever that was, that is despicable. You can't accept such behavior. How dare you insult John Vian and Simbe after, was it five? I lost count. There were so many goals. They considered so many goals over the weekend. Is it him who insulted you? Ah, uh, no. Me? I can't do that. I learned in life, you're not supposed to kick someone when they're down. Vianney was down and there's no way really, it was. Make... Anyway, guys, you'll sort of dismiss out uh, the moment we get out of the show. Uh, good evening once again, Vianney. Welcome to the good show. Good evening, Andrew uh, Kabura. David and, uh... Oboa. It's a huge story, obviously, for the country. Uh, what are you hearing? Have you heard anything? Well, I had the rumor on uh, Sunday uh, that there was going to be some big news mm. happening at uh, the Bombo military barracks because that's where you are uh, visiting um, UPDF in yeah. the opening fixture of um, the 2023-24 season. So I had a rumor that um, he was going to be there. So I felt that uh, it was such a big moment. It was going to be a big moment and I thought that TV had to be there. But well, I guess um, it was unfortunate there was no TV. But um, I think it's um, exciting news. Um, I'm not saying this because um, I've watched David Oboa for so many years yeah. or because um, he's somebody that I've uh, I've um, known for quite some time and because of the talent that he had. But exciting news that somebody of his ilk is now venturing into management at the top level because that's been the, the outcry by so many people that we need to have um, some of uh, these uh, former top players yeah. get into management. But one thing that you can count on is that um, if you if people had issues with uh, Mike Mutebi and his approach and how tough he was, yeah then uh, you are here in for it because um, <laughs> this guy does not suffer fools yeah. and, and you know the other thing is that um, because of how good he was as a footballer and because he played at the top level in Europe uh, playing in Scotland right. there are certain standards that he has acquired as an individual and he expects those same standards to be reciprocated mm -hmm. by um, the players in the league he's one guy that I know that um, will uh, not um, take any kind of um, excuses from players, nonsense and all that. Like, David Oboa is so much like uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, yeah. that he will say to you as it is, and he will expect good standards of play, he will expect good football, but he will also expect that the players work really hard. And one of the things that has made him also maybe um, fall out with some top uh, people in the, in the top echelons of Ugandan football is because of his uh, personality, that he says it as it is, mm -hmm. and um, he wants things done in a, in a certain way. And is, I don't think that David Oboa is this kind of person that will be at URA Football Club and the management doesn't offer him the support that he needs. And he, stays. And he keeps quiet. Yeah. You no, know, he will say it as it is. So um, I hope that you are a know yeah. what they are in for in hiring him because I think that the game needs people yeah. like him That's for true. it to grow. Because mm -hmm. if you remember that David Oboa even talk, talked of his late father when he was uh, FIFA president, when the Cranes players were not being paid yeah. the allowances. And he, he talked him off and told him, what do you think you're doing with, with this kind of um, <laughs> yeah. management where the players have no allowances and things of that kind? Now, that is David Oboa. If he could tell his father that, then who do you think he, he walked out of uh, you got the Cranes camp? Yeah, just exactly. Just because they were being shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Just before a presidential exactly. visit. And yeah. He up, so yeah, because that kind of character yeah, what, what he believes in, he believes in yeah. and he'll stand for it no matter what. You, interesting, you mentioned Mike Mutebi, the last comment that was on, I think it was Isaac, he said, he would like to see him actually with Mike Motebi at the Cranes. Imagine those two working together with the national ah. team. That would be something. But yeah, yeah like you said, and, what and, a character. And, and you know why Mike Motebi picked him uh, to be his Cranes yeah. captain? Because he can he relate. Felt that uh, in many ways, he, re he was that kind of person who represented him. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of the way he looked at the game and, yeah. the, and the kind of character that uh, Mike Motebi was, even as a footballer himself. Like, it's this kind of relationship like a Roy Keane, Faggy kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the kind of thing that Mike Mutebi had with David Opua. That uh, they had a very close uh, relationship, but also they, that they understood each other because of having similarities yeah. in character. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I feel that URA needs this to wake up because those, those players that URA and the kind of investment that URA has um, injected in that team in terms of 
human resource. All right. Yeah. They need that kind of coach yeah. for them to get over the field. I really hope it works out. Fantastic. We are getting that big story and we shall continuously follow it for you guys. You are set to announce uh, the Uganda Cranes legend David Oboa as their new head coach. When that finally drops, we shall have that official statement as well. Let's